My wife died a few years ago with one of my twin sons in a car accident caused by a drunk driver. After mourning for two long years, I decided that I needed to find a girlfriend, potentially even a wife. I went on Match.com, filled out the usual forms, and searched for local women to date. I am not the most attractive guy, but I messaged a few women close to where I live. This one woman, who I thought was totally out of my league, emailed me back. We would chat through email and instant messenger. After a month, we started texting and then I finally called her. She seemed completely normal on the phone. I decided that I wanted to meet her, so I grew some balls and asked her out. Sarah, would you mind going out for coffee at, say, the local diner? Sarah replied she would be happy to. She knew of my family situation and that I had one son that lived with me. The local diner is where everyone in town hangs out. It's located at the side of a major highway through the county. It's also a major gossip spot. We're a small town, so there are no secrets. Even the state police stopped there, as well as truckers and stuff like that. I made a few trucker friends there before. We planned to meet up in two days time. I explained to my son that I was meeting Sarah and he might possibly meet her down the road. He seemed excited about me meeting someone. I told him that he will be staying with our neighbor, who was a retired narcotics officer. He and his wife are like second grandparents to him. When the day came, I took my son and his two dogs over to the neighbors to spend the night. I got all cleaned up, made sure I had enough cash, gas was in the car, car was clean, and the usual pre-date preparations. But when I got into the car, it would not start. What the fuck, not now, I thought. So I got out and ran across to my neighbor's house and asked if I could borrow their car. We've borrowed each other's vehicles in the past, so of course, they said yes. I rushed into town and barely made it to the diner with just minutes to spare. When I walked in and I looked around, I couldn't find Sarah. I was well known at this diner and everyone just stared and made comments on how I was dressed. The server, Kathy, I personally call her Kat, is a 19 year old girl and daughter of the owner. Her uncle also works in the sheriff's department in town. Remember when I said that the diner is a gossip spot? If you want to know what's going on, you ask Kat. When times are slow at the diner, Kat gets on the internet and starts surfing for criminals and weird shit that goes on. They even have wanted posters and famous criminals on one of the walls. Somewhat of a bulletin board with local pedophiles, etc. Like I said, small town, no secrets. Kat and her family also lived down the street from me and occasionally babysat my son. She asked me if I was on some sort of hot date and I replied, yes. Apparently, my son had told Kat that I was talking to someone online. She asked me if I had a picture of my lady friend. When I showed her a picture, she just got this weird look on her face, muttered a nice comment and then hurried and left my table to get me my drink. This was unusual because Kat chats everyone's ears off, so much that she sometimes forgets to order food or bring drinks. I got out my phone and texted Sarah, Hey, where are you? Sarah texted back and told me she was 10 minutes away and I replied that I cannot wait to see her. Kat was talking to the other patrons in the diner but seemed to constantly be glancing over at me with this look I can't even explain. As I looked around the room at everyone, they would look away. I'm pretty well known in the county, although I don't know everyone. The next thing I noticed, Kat was on the phone talking to someone and then abruptly hung up. At that moment, I got a text from Sarah saying she was five minutes away. Kat came with my drink and asked me again if she could see the picture of Sarah. I gladly showed her. After seeing it again, she asked me, you know who that is, don't you? It's Sarah, I said. Kat replied, Um, that's a guy dressed up as a woman. 
This guy likes to stalk people online and lure them in to steal their money. He got out of jail six months ago. I blurted out, what the fuck? As it turns out, this guy was a psychopath that preyed upon lonely people, just like me. He was the black sheep from a very influential family that had relatives in law enforcement, local papers, county council, the judicial system, and some school board positions in that county and surrounding ones. Psycho Sarah was charged with stalking men and women on online dating sites. He would go into their homes, tie them up, and then rob them. His victims were two older women and one widower, just like me. From what Kat told me, he spent a year and a half in jail and was released on good behavior. He was given, and accepted, a deal from the county attorney office with the following conditions when released. 1. Do not use dating sites. 2. Mandated counseling to control his impulses. 3. To wear a monitoring device so he could not go back to his victims' homes. 4. Not to contact any of the victims. 5. He would be on probation for four years. Kat told me that she contacted the police because this guy wasn't supposed to go on online dating sites. She also said that the police asked for me to act natural until they get there. I thought, how in the fucking hell am I going to act natural when a guy who is dressed up like, and sounds like, a woman was hitting on me, telling me I was good looking, sounded nice, and wanted to meet my son. I was fucking furious at this point and when I received a text from Sarah stating she was parking, I wanted to go outside and kill the bastard. Kat noticed the text and said that one of the truckers told her he would protect me. The next moments were the worst of my life. The door to the diner opened and the woman from Match.com appeared. A dead silence came over the diner. I waved half-heartedly at her, although I was madder than hell. Kat, very calm and collected, went over and asked if she wanted a menu. I heard Sarah say, Oh, there is my date over there. I knew she, or he, was talking about me. Just as that was said, two county sheriff's cars and a state police car pulled up. I thought I was saved. The Sarah imposter saw them too and quickly turned around and bolted out the door. He didn't get very far. The state police officer body slammed him to the ground in front of the diner. They arrested Sarah and came in to take my statement. The sheriff, a friend of mine, told me I was lucky and that he would need my cell phone, emails, etc. I gladly gave them to him. No one in the county ever judged me. They all knew of my situation regarding my wife and my son. It was nice having all the support. Let's just say I will never go online to find a date or wife. In fact, I swore that day, I will be single forever and simply raise my son. I hope I never see that psychotic bitch again. I really hope nobody judges me for some of the stupid mistakes I made that lead to my horror story. I've never told anyone about this, so here it goes. So, I need to give a little background to try to explain my behavior in the story. When I was 16 and a virgin, I was raped by my first boyfriend. This caused kind of the opposite reaction that you would expect in my dating life. Instead of being afraid of men and sex, I was more willing to be with men and more free with sex because in my mind, if I gave it out willingly, then at least it was my choice. And if I was more willing, then I could never be raped again. But this experience snapped me out of that mentality. I was 21 when this happened. I had been using plenty of fish for a little while to date and, you know, hook up with a few guys. I had been texting this new guy for a couple of days. Let's call him Mike. Mike was a 22-year-old that looked very athletic, in the photos at least. Over the weekend, Mike kept texting me about how he really wanted to come over to my place to meet me, 
so that we could talk and cuddle or something like that. But I was a little unsure since both of my roommates had gone home for the weekend. Eventually, I just said, screw it, and gave him my apartment address, telling myself, what's the worst that could happen? In only about 20 minutes, he texted me that he was here. Since the buzzer to let people in was broken in my old apartment, I walked down the stairs and into the lobby to let him in. I only saw one guy standing on the other side of the glass, and he did not look like the mic in the photos. This man looked like he was in his late 30s, and it looked like he hadn't been to the gym in years. I didn't know what to do, but I didn't want to be rude. Mike could clearly see me on the other side of the glass, so I hesitantly opened the door for him. Oddly, he was quiet the whole time, so I asked, Mike? He nodded, and we quietly walked back to my apartment. I felt beyond awkward the whole time. When we got to my apartment, I tried to talk a bit more to fill the silence, but he never said a whole lot. I had noticed that he seemed to have a cold, so I quietly hoped that meant that he wouldn't try to make a move or anything to avoid getting me sick too. We picked a movie to start to watch and I sat as far away from him as I could on the couch. I don't know what it was, but he just made me feel so uncomfortable. Only a few minutes into the movie, Mike started to get really close to where I was and started touching me. I just kept shrugging him off or shying away from his touch to try to make it obvious I wasn't okay with that. All of a sudden, he forcefully started kissing me. I immediately started to push him away and said, stop. But as soon as I did, he grabbed my hair and forced my head down onto the couch with him getting on top of me, still kissing me. Fear gripped my heart with an iron fist. I was in serious danger. I kept pushing him. He grabbed my wrist and pulled it back to the hand holding my hair. All of a sudden, I just snapped. I will not be raped a second time in my life, my brain screamed. I dug my nails into his hand as hard as I could and scratched his face with my other hand. I used my back, hips, and legs to push his body off mine and onto the floor. I ran for the kitchen with him directly behind me. I grabbed the biggest knife I could from the knife block and turned to face him. Get out! I yelled. He seemed to contemplate for a couple of seconds. It felt like hours until he finally turned and left. I ran and locked the door behind him before curling up and crying for hours. And well, that's about it. I actually do still use POF, but I'm just smarter about it. I always meet in a public place first, no exceptions, and a friend always knows where I'm going and who I'm with. So, I definitely learned my lesson. This next story is told in the perspective of a female. The following happened to me when I was about 17. I was newly single after a very toxic two year long relationship. I never had many friends outside of my previous relationship so I decided to look up some social media apps just to find people to talk to. I came across an app called Text Plus and read the reviews. It had pretty much every feature I was looking for at the time, including themed chat rooms to meet new friends. It even had photo uploads and a custom phone number to text potential love interests. So I downloaded the app and immediately browsed the chat rooms. Now, I was a bit of an angsty teen, so all of the hardcore and metalcore chat rooms were my favorite. I spoke to some really cool people in the hardcore scene who I felt I really related to, and I didn't feel quite as lonely anymore. A few days passed with no cringy texts from anyone, so I thought to myself that this app might be a lesser known one and that maybe all the other people who had this app were just regular people. About a week after downloading the app, I had received a private text message from a random user by the name of Fender. When I opened the text, it said something along the lines of, So, you're a Devil Wears Prada fan too? I wasn't creeped out by this, and I didn't feel any need to ignore his message, so, of course, I responded with a, Fuck yeah. He replied less than a minute after I sent the text, and we just kept the conversation going. 
We talked the whole day about everything under the sun, like music, high school, anime, and other personal interests. I genuinely enjoyed talking to Fender. His personality was easy to sense, even through text. The way he worded his sentences made him seem as if he had an abrasively sarcastic personality, which, oddly, meshed with my shy, polite texting style. As the week progressed, we still spoke every day, but our conversations started becoming more... personal. He'd ask me if I ever had sex and if I liked it. I'd tell him that I was too uncomfortable to talk about those things. He'd immediately respond with, I'm so sorry, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. And then he'd change the subject. But as time progressed, he'd always try to bring sex into the conversation again, even though I'd always turn him down. I honestly don't remember how long we kept in contact, but it must have been at least three months. I can't believe I was speaking to a guy I didn't know anything about for three months. I know, I was fucking stupid. After a while, we'd swap random selfies back and forth making goofy faces, but the pictures he'd send me were always heavily pixelated and looked like they had been processed multiple times because of the horrible quality. But once again, I ignored the red flags. One day, he asked me to send him a quick video just because he wanted to hear my voice, he said. I should have been creeped out, but instead I felt a sense of flattery. He asked for a photo, I'd send him a photo. He asked for a video, I'd send him a video. I even told him which city and state I lived in. I thought, as long as he didn't know my address, I'd be perfectly safe. Fast forward to about three months into our communication. One night, I woke up at about 4 a.m. to my phone buzzing like crazy. I had at least 30 unread text plus notifications from Fender. They were the type of messages I had never expected from him. They said things like, I can't hold it in any longer. I want to make you mine. Please answer my messages. I, I love you and I want to see you. I'm gonna get a plane ticket and I'm going to find you and finally hold you in my arms. I feel sick. Please text me back. Are you excited to see me? I was fucking terrified. It's one thing to imagine you're talking to a rational person, but it's a totally different story when that person starts texting you like a desperate maniac. Especially out of literally nowhere. I didn't even get to read all 30 of his texts before I deactivated my account and deleted that fucking app. Two years after this whole incident, I was browsing YouTube with a friend of mine on her laptop. She suggested we search our names to see what video results come up. I mean, I think all of us have done that. I agreed and typed my first, middle, and last name into the YouTube search bar. The first result was a video of an awkward red-haired me from two years ago. The title of the video, Please help me find this girl with my full name in brackets. My face went pale as my friend said, what's that? I reluctantly scanned my eyes across the screen to where the uploader's name was, and I saw it. Fender. My heart exploded in a panic and I slammed the laptop closed. I'm now 22 and I still refuse to type my full name into the YouTube search bar ever again in fear that the video might still be there. The strangest thing about all of this bullshit is that I've never told him my full name. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not subbed to me, DO IT! YES YOU CAN! JUST DO IT! I know some of you like to sit here and think that these videos are just stories and that they could never happen, but that's not always the case. Finding someone is extremely easy, 
especially if you're in the United States. Most information is public, and the more information you reveal when signing up on forums and even things like Facebook, the more information that is stored publicly for anyone that has your name to see. Please be careful what you tell people. Don't ever think that you're safe if you just tell them your first name or you just tell them what state you live in. You never know what they might already have or what their intentions are. This doesn't just go for dating apps, this goes for everything in general. That being said, the internet can be a great place for you to talk to some really nice people. Just be careful, because once it's out there, it can't be deleted. That's about all I have to say about that. On a brighter note, I just wanted to thank you guys for helping out on Twitter by mass tweeting famous YouTubers with me and Jamba Juice. Jamba Juice actually sent me a letter and gave me free drinks. I'll show part of it on screen now. I actually drink Jamba Juice every morning before I record, so it's really helpful, and I'm not just saying that, I really have always done that. So thanks so much for partaking in that if you did, and the face thing was pretty fun too, even though I'm assuming they misunderstood my intentions. It was still pretty fun. I'm thinking the next target on Twitter is going to be Logic the Rapper because I love him and he actually responds sometimes. This doesn't mean do that right now though guys, just follow me on Twitter and I'll announce when that will happen. The corpse army is strong. Anyways, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video and please stay safe. Oh, and I almost forgot, please check out Eden, the female narrator in this video. She works really hard and I really want to help her hit 10k, so her channel is in the description. Please subscribe to her.